Um, are we recording? I, I can't see. This is why I have to have the screen flipped up so I can see whether I am or not. I am, good. Now I'll likely have to reset between each attempt, so my hope is that I get this maybe on the first try, if not very close to the first try. Come on. Get a good amount of smoke. Wait for it to dissipate a bit. <laughs> we'll give it another go, that's a pity. So take two, get the smoke going. Dissipate a bit. Mother That one felt a bit funny. That was quite nice, although the foot stayed up a bit too long and it looked unbalanced. <laughs> okay. Whoops. <laughs> we got it, we got it, nice. So I have a kind of loose tradition of doing these Halloween stories on my channel. This year I was able to do one, it's called The Grand Other, and it came out a few weeks ago. Now the story was based off a script that I wrote in 2021, thinking that that Halloween I would release it as a film. However, other projects soon took up a lot of my attention and two whole years went by. When I did get round to it though, I shot a lot of behind the scenes footage, so that's why I'm making this video. And if you've been enjoying the Rebuilding Dab Chick series, this video should have a similar vibe. On the subject of that video series, I was recently sent a 3D printer by Frozen, which is a 3D print company out of Taiwan, I believe. Oh, that's fun. Now, viewers will know how tricky I found the 3D print process so far, but with this particular product, it was an absolute breeze. And it also helped with this project too, and I'll share how later in the video. So I hope you find this interesting. I don't think I've shot a behind the scenes on this scale before. Uh, so if you like my work, there's a good chance you will find it interesting. I bought myself a six string banjo back in early 2021 and some of the early noodling that I was playing around with uh, resulted in this tune that I developed a little bit and then wrote lyrics to. So I jotted it out on a Google document. I think the process took maybe two or three weeks to get it mostly done, although I think some of the verses took a little extra refining afterwards. Now this is about as far as I got in 2021 before the other projects took precedent. But I restarted in late September of 2023 and got straight into the recording process. Now mostly when I do musical pieces, I record the music live with the performance, but that couldn't really be done in this instance because I needed the music to outline the narrative as it set the pace for the whole story. So it served almost like a template, I would say, for the visuals. Now I did get ambitious with the arrangement of this, but I did want to keep it simple too. I didn't want to detract from the story. So I limited the instruments that I used to the six string banjo that I mentioned before, uh, and also this small guitar and a few improvised uh, percussive uh, devices. Using physical instruments also led to some really fun discoveries along the way. Here are a couple. Oh, I like that. That was an accidental uh, chord change. Um, I must remember that actually, because uh, it's part of, well, one of the ways I want to avoid repetition is by mixing up the chords, keeping the melody generally the same, but different chord pans. But that was an accident and it sounded good. So I might leave it in there. So this is the distorted banjo track that I just recorded. And take a listen to what happens when the playhead, which is currently here, reaches around this point. <laughs> beautiful uh, harmonic swell that was completely unintentional but when you work with analog stuff things like that happen and it's just gorgeous once the instruments were down i laid over the vocals i recorded this with a couple of microphones strapped together so that i would have the most options when i mixed the piece one two three i up in the hills of appalachia on a long and lonesome dusty road Two young lovers driving, soon to be arriving At the door of Granny's small abode Granny seemed more frail and more distant But she of course had every right to be Grandpa had departed, left her broken hearted Wallowing in pain and misery Ooh, That last phrase is hard to do on a single breath 
So there are a couple of props that I was lucky enough to find on eBay. This grandmother doll, I think I got from Australia. I got it alongside another one actually that does feature in the piece, but very uh, elusively. And no one actually has spotted this character yet. So there's a challenge for you. In terms of look and scale, these dolls really were perfect, as was this little beaten up uh, tin VW bug that I found on eBay too. Some of the props did require making though, including Granny's knife, uh, these little glasses that I made out of epoxy glue. So when this cures, it should look something like this one I did prior. And most extensively, these cabin doors that I made out of popsicle sticks. I think this is going to work pretty well. And aged using acrylic. I make these films entirely by myself and I'm often asked how I'm able to get two puppets or, or more on screen interacting or seemingly interacting with each other. The answer is that I comp them together. Some of you might know the green screen technique. Uh, now you can join multiple elements that way, characters, props, backgrounds, in a single scene. By shooting on a black background, I'm essentially able to use black in a similar capacity to how the green is used in green screen. Uh, but it has the added benefit of not having to be removed afterwards because the black actually serves as the background. So because these characters were mostly comped together, you would seldom get them interacting physically with each other. And in instances where they seem to do this, it's usually the result of careful masking or it's a close-up, so I'm able to operate half of two puppets with each of my hands simultaneously. Such considerations might seem to limit possibilities, but I view this as a challenge and it's only an issue if the audience picks up on it. And I don't think, I don't think you did. Now that particular technique I've done many times before, but I did discover some new ones during this project and this next one I found really interesting. Now this chest here has doubled as a bed, a deck, uh, a table in, in various contexts, so I do reuse it a lot and I would like to use it as a table in this context, however it has just been used in the scene prior as a bed and I think that might be a little bit confusing. So I found this table, problem is, as you can see, <laughs> it's way too small, however if I position it in a way that on the screen it's larger just using perspective I might be able to find a way to do it so we'll just clamp it somewhere like this floating in front of the uh, of the action in order to finish the film in time for Halloween, I calculated that I had to shoot about 30 seconds of footage a day. But the film also contained a short but very visually distinct segment in this shadow story sequence. As a sequence, I wanted it to step back a little from the action, but not slow it down to the point that it feels like a jumped up PowerPoint presentation. So here's what I came up with. I flipped a stool over and stretched some nicely textured material over the legs, lit it from above and placed the camera beneath looking up. The most complicated part in terms of fabrication were these 2D characters and props that I designed, specifically because they would have to be cut out. Given that some of these characters were just a few millimeters tall, this was going to be very, very difficult and this actually is where the 3D printer really saved the day. By processing scans of the drawings in a certain way, I could convert them into 3D models and thereby make them 3D printable. Since the elements are essentially flat, no support structures were required. Now this also meant that these prints, as print duration is depth dependent, only took a few minutes to complete. Frozen also supplied me with a wash and cure station, which really helped take care of the cleanup. Now, I edited as I went along, so mostly that process wrapped up as I finished shooting. However, the mastering of the audio was a little bit off and it was only after I uploaded that a friend of mine let me know that the vocals could be a little bit clearer. Now, mixing voices like mine can be quite tricky because my voice is somewhat low compared to most people's and getting it to pop above the other sounds is a bit of a challenge. So that same friend who is called Basili suggested that I raise the treble frequencies in the recording of my voice by just a little bit. And this really allowed the clarity of the lyrics to come through, which are obviously an important part of the storytelling. However, boosting the treble frequency of the voice can present other issues, particularly in sounds like S's and T's, as they are already quite treble rich, so they can become quite grating and harsh. So another friend of mine, Martin, suggested that I go through and manually lower all of these instances by a few decibels. Now I hadn't done a mix that was this complex before, so to get this right took a few attempts and a couple of re-uploads as well. But the process taught me a lot that I will implement in future mixes and I'm very happy with how it sounds now. 
On the subject of sound, I haven't talked about Foley, which is essentially recording believable sound effects. Hmm, should be a bit louder. Yeah, that's good. Sometimes, though, mismatched sounds worked pretty well. The scraping sound of a washboard was used every time the grandmother moved, which might not seem to fit a knitted character. However, it is an instrument that you might associate with the Appalachian setting. And the mismatching does reinforce the sense that something is not as it seems with Granny. And to find out what that is, you'll have to watch the film. I'll link it below. So a huge thanks to my patrons. Without their generous support, I would not be able to bring you films like this. And if you would like to join them, here is a link to my Patreon account. Now, I wanted to keep this video a certain length, but I will be sharing more behind the scenes snippets of this production in the coming weeks on my Patreon. This includes the isolated backing track from this video, which is quite pretty, and I'll use a snippet of this to play this video out. A huge thanks also to Frozen for sending me that 3D printer. You'll see more of that in the upcoming Dabchick rebuild videos. Thanks for watching.